I'm not even sure where to begin this time around and I'll try not to be as harsh as I was in my last video. At the end you'll see the clip so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The world's worst place to be disabled, Ghana. Now if you've realised that isn't even a question, it's a statement as though it's been confirmed by someone. I sympathise with journalist Sophie Morgan who travelled to Ghana to determine or confirm whether or not Ghana is the world's worst place to be disabled. And I am a British born Ghanaian so I understand both mentalities but that does not mean that I agree with both of them. Now I put a question to you Sophie and those who have jumped on the bandwagon saying that Ghana is the world's worst place to be disabled. There are 196 countries in the world. So if you visited Ghana and you live in the UK, have you travelled to every single country in the world to determine how disabled people are treated in those countries? Or did you ignorantly determine that Ghana is the world's worst place to be disabled? Anyone living with a disability in the United Kingdom knows that from time to time you're going to get a pretty strange reaction or two from the general public. To gauge that we have the help of state-of-the-art cameras here and on the end of Guide Dog Chip's harness. I'm just actually desperately lost. Can anybody help me please? Really lost. Can anybody help? I don't know where I'm going and I'm really lost. Can anybody help me please? Being ignored is a common problem. Here's Wayne again in the red. Simon has a fear of toilets. That's where Wayne takes him to teach him a lesson for his bear hugs. I mean, it's like going to a Michelin-starred restaurant after reading a few reviews and before you have even eaten the food, you decide that it's the best tasting food you've ever eaten in your life. It doesn't even make any sense. So Sophie, you have your opinion, but this is mine. Hi guys, welcome once again to The Journey's Pursuit Le Cote which means the journey's bit on the side. Now today, the issue I will be addressing is the documentary that was aired on BBC, hosted by Sophie Morgan, the world's worst place to be disabled, Ghana. After handing over a payment of two bottles of schnapps and about 40 pounds, Nana agrees to consult the gods about my disability. If a mother comes to see you with a baby who is disabled, how do you help that mother? How do you help that baby? What exactly does that mean? What does see them off mean? So yeah, so nanka sanka sebe fa na dia ko bi o e bi o ho adane wo wo. E bi susu ho atimi tia ni abua bi. E bi susu ho ho atimi ka se e difference be bi kwa. Do you think it's all right to kill disabled children? So wa ka sa so pe a. Ene manu tia so pe a so ro ka so ja wa dia kwa. Simple. Okay. Do you think my parents should kill me? Do we need to keep asking this lunatic questions? I don't really want to be here anymore. Now there are comments that I feared would be made after the BBC aired the documentary The World's Worst Place to be Disabled Ghana, as you can see below. I 
I do not necessarily agree with the archaic mentality of a lot of Ghanaians in Ghana. I won't generalize because not every Ghanaian in the world thinks or feels this way about how the disabled people are maltreated, being chained, being beaten, being forced to drink medicine. I saw it all. And I do agree that there are norms and traditions that should be abolished in Ghana. But Sophie, when you visited these people, for example, the fetish priests and Madam Irene, by the way they spoke and the conditions they live in, did you not assume that maybe these people were uneducated, unlettered, illiterate? Call it what you please. In the UK, pregnant women are offered a screening or a blood test between 10 to 20 weeks of their pregnancy to determine whether their unborn child has Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, or Patel syndrome. Now I ask you, what is the purpose of this test? Well, I will let you know. According to the NHS website, if you find out that your unborn baby is suffering from Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, or Patel syndrome, you have two options. You can either choose to keep the baby, or you're given the option to terminate your pregnancy. In layman terms, you can have an abortion. I put this to you, Sophie, and viewers. Can a termination, because your unborn baby is suffering from a disability, be compared to a mother or a father who gives their child to a fetish priest to sacrifice them to the God? Or can it not be because it falls under the Abortion Act 1967? Yes, one is lawful, but technically you are still killing two children because they are disabled. Do you consider that to be inhumane treatment of disabled babies or people? Or do you consider it to be lawful killing because it comes under the Abortion Act? make an informed decision about whether they want to offer their child to the gods. In the UK, however, if you are under the age of 16, you are able to decide whether you want to terminate your pregnancy or not. Now, I'm not saying that I agree with either of these practices at all. But what I am saying is that as an adult, you can make an informed decision about what to do with your child. What does a 16 year old know about a termination? Now Sophie, have you addressed this issue? That a child under the age of 16 may want to terminate their pregnancy because their child is disabled and they are allowed to do this. Do you see this as an issue? Would you brand the UK the world's worst place to be disabled because of it? As for the conditions that some Africans live in, how they are maltreated, the lack of resources, the lack of facilities. I have and will continue to blame the government for this. I heard you ask the fetish priest whether he believed that your parents should kill you. Now, as you know, this is optional. No parent takes their child to a fetish priest because they are forced to. It is completely their choice. Just as in the UK, aborting a child is completely your choice. It is optional. I don't want it to seem as though I'm attacking you, Sophie, because I am not. I definitely do not agree with the maltreatment of disabled children, babies, or adults. As far as I'm aware, there is no free healthcare in Africa like there is in the UK, which is what we refer to as being the NHS. So the fetish priest, for some in villages, is the only option. Once again, I do not condone this behavior. I do not condone their ideologies at all. But you must understand that Africa and the UK, or even Ghana and the UK, are worlds apart. I mean, as for the government, you tell me, is there any free healthcare? Where would you want these people to go? Why haven't you addressed the issue of fetish priests killing disabled children? Is it not an issue to you? After all I have said, 
These are my final thoughts. Sophie, without traveling to all 196 countries, I do not believe that you can conclude that Ghana is the world's worst place to be disabled. Ghana's government, you need to sort yourself out. People have been suffering for decades because of your unwillingness to finish developing a forever developing country. And finally, to those of you who watched the documentary, The World's Worst Place to be Disabled, Ghana, and believe that all Ghanaians are brutes, please do not generalize because this is not the opinion or the view or the mentality of every Ghanaian in the world. Thank you. Now don't forget guys, you can follow me on Instagram at Naoko Aware, on Twitter at Naoko Aware, and you can like our Facebook page which is the.first.journey. You can also view my clips on Snapchat by typing in naoka.owari. Because there are certain things that just irk me and rub me up the wrong way. I can't stand stupidity. This journey, Pursue Le Cote, is called Who the Hell is Kofi Filippo? The Kofi part isn't even his real name.